So this is the first screen that you presented with when you um, first open up a copy of Ableton Live. Now this is uh, this is the session view in Ableton. Ableton has two separate views that you can use to produce and perform your music. This one is called the session view, um, and this is this is the one that's used to perform your music. And I'm not going to focus on session view for this series of tutorials because we're going to be talking about producing music, creating things. So we're going to work an arrangement view, which gives you a nice timeline um, to lay out all of your elements and, and whatnot. There are video tutorials on Session View on my website if you want to get more into this um, and learn how to use it, but we're going to go into Arrangement View for now. Now over here on this uh, right hand side you see we've got two points um, or two little dots. Now this is how you turn from Session View to Arrangement View. So this is what Arrangement View looks like, this is what Session View looks like. Don't mix them up, Session View kind of looks like an Excel spreadsheet and this is Arrangement View. And Arrangement View you have a timeline. You can also push the Tab key to switch between the two views. So this is Arrangement View, I'm just going to close down this little side panel here because we're not going to use this for now, so click this arrow up here which will close it down. So if we have a look at um, Arrangement View we can kind of get a grip on how it works. You see we've kind of got a timeline which, which stretches horizontally across from left to right across the screen um, and uh, horizontally we've got um, these rows or layers or tracks if you want. These layers are where you put your individual instruments or your synthesizers or your samples, so your drums, your bass, your synths and all that kind of thing. They, they go down in the horizontal row. So if we look at this timeline you can see up the top we've got some numbers. Now these numbers represent bar numbers, they don't represent um, actual seconds and minutes, these are down the bottom. So if we look down the bottom you see we've got 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. And um, and so we, we kind of create our tune along along this timeline and, and as it progresses. And you'll see as we, as we move uh, forward down the timeline, you see it stretches out for us. Um, up the top here, um, which I clicked on before, this is the zoom area. This is where you can zoom in and out of um, different areas of the arrangement. You can simply click around and, it, and it'll, it will jump to a point. Or if you click and drag up, it'll zoom out. And if you drag down, it'll zoom in. And while you're holding the mouse down, as you zoom up and down, you can also move it from left to right. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get it, it's a really powerful uh, way of um, zipping through your song. So these numbers up here, um, these are the bar numbers, so you see we've got 1, 5, 9, 13, so this would be bar 5, and then this would be bar 9, this would be 13. Um, if we zoom in, again if we click up the top and zoom in like this, you see how the grid adds in extra points for us and we get extra bar numbers, and if we move in even more, now we've got bar 1, bar 2, bar 3, and bar 4. And bars work in the sense of a bar is a group of uh, uh, beats if you like. So this bar 1 would have 4 beats in it, because we've got this time signature here um, on 4-4, four, four, this means in one bar we're going to have 4 four beats, and 4 is a quarter, a quarter beat. So if I turn on the metronome, which is this little button up here, and hit play, we can hear it ticking along, 2, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And this is um, this is the way you work when you produce um, electronic music, um, and you put the notes in time with each other and all that kind of thing. If I zoom in even more, you see how the grid gets smaller and smaller. So now we've got each individual beat of the bar, we can see it, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4 etc etc. So that's quite handy. So this, the, again this is the arrangement view, this is where we're going to be doing the majority of our work. So the first thing we want to do is we want to introduce something that we can work with, a synthesizer or a layer or an instrument or something like that. For this example um, I'm going to start with a synthesizer, I'm going to start with a simple synthesizer and we're going to create a sound um, which is ultimately going to be used for our bass line which we're going to start with. Um, we're going to write a bit of a kind of a dancey electro kind of tune and um, so we'll start with a, a bass line. Now you see Ableton's default template gives us two of these layers or um, tracks if you want for us already. Tracks is the correct terminology. Um, we've got this one that says one audio and we've got this one that says two MIDI. Now it's if, for the default template it's given us two of the two most common um, uh, diff types of layers or tracks that you can have in Ableton. It's, it's given us one of each. So we've got an audio track and a MIDI track. And these are the only two tracks that we can use, um, or types of tracks. We can add in as many as we want, but there are only two types. The audio track is used for adding in um, samples or sound uh, sounds or recording in audio. So this, this track records a waveform into it. Um, which we can manipulate and muck with the waveform. MIDI tracks are different. What they are used for is they are kind of like a, a data track. So if you insert something into a MIDI track, uh, if we add some information into the MIDI track, um, it doesn't play a waveform, it plays a set of instructions um, 
and it sends those instructions to whatever machine you happen to have loaded up on the MIDI track. And for our example, we're going to have a synthesizer. So it, it tells the synthesizer what to do, how to how to behave, and what notes to play, and what rhythm to play in the mix, etc. So we don't need this audio track for now. We're just going to be working with just this MIDI track. So I'm going to click on this um, audio track up on the name here. It says one audio, and I'm going to hit delete. So now, now we've just got this MIDI track, one MIDI track, single layer. And I'm going to rename this track to um, bass because we're going to call it a bass line. And it's really good habit to get into naming your tracks as you create them because once you start getting many tracks you can get a bit lost if you're not too sure what they contain so I'm gonna go uh, command R or control R on the PC which uh, you'll see will highlight the name of the track and we're gonna type in bass and hit return so now we know this is a MIDI track it's ready for a bass and it's ready to load up an instrument into it now the instrument that I'm going to use uh, for this example here is I'm going to use um, the Ableton inbuilt synthesizer. So I, I, over here I clicked on this button here and this is um, the live devices. These are the instruments and effects that come native with Ableton. So um, Ableton will come with these effects and whatnot. Um, the analog and the operator and a few of these other ones are, are separate modules that you do have to pay for um, but they're still native to Ableton that's why I'm going to use them for this example. Now th this, this, this thing here you see it says analog and this is under the instruments folder it might look like this the first time you click on it. If we open up the instruments folder and we get this analog you see down here it says drop MIDI effects audio effects instruments and samples here. Now this row down at the bottom this is where all the machines and all the synthesizers and all the things that we use to manipulate the sound. This is where they all stack up. So this one is where the information is kept and this one is where the machines are kept. So I'm going to take this analog because this is the machine that we want to generate the sound and I'm going to drag this down to where it says drop it. Boom. So you see now we've got this uh, new machine sitting here uh, waiting um, for some information. Now this, um, this synthesizer here, um, analog, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice standard synthesizer. There's two native to Ableton or Ableton 7, which is the analog and the operator. Um, I'm going to use the analog for this example because it's, it's nice and straightforward. It gives you a nice clear um, uh, uh, line of routing from where the audio starts to where it finishes. Um, and uh, it also doesn't have too many complex um, ways of routing things up. So you can get a really good idea of how synthesis works. And what we're going to be focusing on solely for the start is this little box here. So you see I clicked on this little box and it's, it's this, this rectangle here which contains um, these things, these three looking knobs, this drop down box and these little little uh, things here. Now this is the oscillator. This is, you can see it says OSC1 which stands for oscillator 1. And the oscillator is the very, very beginning of a synthesizer. This is where the sound starts. It, it starts from scratch right here. Um, and how it's generated is it, um, it's called an oscillator because it takes a simple shape. Um, you can see here on this little shape drop down menu we've got uh, a, an option of four shapes. Um, we're going to take the shape here, it's going to take the shape and it's going to oscillate it or it's going to repeat this shape over and over and over, um, hundreds, thousands of times depending on how, how many times you tell it to do it. And as the shape repeats over and over and over, it's going to generate a tone for us. And the way that works is, if you can imagine a speaker or your headphones or whatever you've got um, in front of you that you're listening to the music from, um, you think of this, the cone sitting in the speaker, right? So this, this speaker cone, the part that vibrates in the speaker, it's sitting there, it's in the middle, it's completely still, it's waiting for information so it can start vibrating. Now, when we generate something with the synthesizer, um, and we tell it to, to um, uh, make the shape over and over and over, it's gonna it's gonna move the speaker in the shape that we tell it to at a rate that we define. Um, I think I've got some pictures here. Let's have a look. Yeah. Okay. So this is a this is a simple uh, graph of what a wave shape looks like, or a waveform, or a wavelength, or whatever you like to call it. And this is a sine wave. You've probably seen this or are familiar with this. Um, it's in mathematics, physics, everywhere that you look. Um, and it's this kind of curvy, wriggly line that goes up and down and up and down. So this is what's happening to your speaker. Here's a good picture of a speaker here. This is what's happening to your speaker when you tell it or when you use a tell a synthesizer to play a sine wave through the speaker. So we can think of this line down the middle. This is the this is the state at where the speaker is completely flat. It's not moving. It's been given no information, and it's just going to say stay still. But as the synthesizer tells the speaker to vibrate, the line goes up and up and up. So 
you can imagine the speaker pushing out. So this, and we're doing this in slow motion here. The speaker is pushing out slowly, slowly. It's pushing out, pushing out, pushing out. It reaches the top, and this is reaches the point where the speaker is pushed out as far as it can be, and then it slowly comes back, and it slowly comes back until it hits that null state again. Then it sucks the speaker in, back into the speaker. It's uh, the speaker cone, and it pushes it back out again, back to that null state. And that cycle there of pushing out as far as it can, back to null, sucking in as far as it can, and back to null, that is called a wavelength. And that is one cycle. That would be one cycle, one frequency, um, sorry, one, one hertz of the actual um, speaker moving. So that was in slow motion. We're going to do this hundreds and thousands of times, of course. So you can imagine the speaker vibrating um, a thousand times. Well, let's say um, the standard A, so the, 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 the note A, um, the Western note A is 440 hertz, and now hertz is, means cycles per second. So if somebody on a piano or a violin or a guitar plays um, standard A, what they're doing is they're vibrating their string, or they're pushing the, the key which vibrates the string um, 440 times per second, and that is universal as being an A. So you can imagine this, this speaker moving in and out 440 times per second, and we get, we get a note. It goes so fast that gives us a pitch of a note. So I'm just going to play um, that for you, just so you can get a quick idea of what that sounds like. So here's shape, okay, I'm going to pick um, the sine wave here, I'll get into the other shapes in a minute. We're going to pick a sine wave because it's a nice, um, pure, um, standard tone to work with. And I'm going to... Um, I'm going to play some notes for you, um, and I'm going to play them using the computer keyboard. Now if we look up here in Ableton, we see we've got this uh, little piano checkbox kind of thing here. We can turn it off and on. This emulates a keyboard for us um, using the computer keys. So if I was to go ahead and push um, A, W, S, E, D, you see how it's uh, generating a... Um, it's, 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 it's playing the note. So Ableton's hearing me push those keys. It's going, right, Tom's pushing um, A. I know that A means this many uh, uh, cycles per second. It tells the analog, right, I'm hearing an A. Analog's going, right, okay, so I need to vibrate this shape at a certain amount of hertz, depending on what I know um, that key to be. Um, so... So that's a uh, that's 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 a that's a simple sine wave. Um, we've got a little bit. Let me just turn this down for you. I'll get into this stuff in a minute. This is just I'm just making it so we can hear the um, the, the 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 sine wave continuously. So you can hear that's a really smooth sound. Now that's the A I was talking about before. Again, if we go and have a look at this picture. Where are we? You can hear that it's it's vibrating 440 times per second, and it's it's a really smooth, nice sound, and that's because it's got these smooth edges. When the speaker reaches the end point, it go, it slowly changes and then slowly comes back again. And when it gets to the point where it's sucked in, it does the opposite, and it it, it just generates a really smooth, pure tone. Um, it's very nice, very fluffy, no harsh edges or anything like that. Um, and signs, sine waveforms or the sound of a sine wave, um, uh, they're not really used too much in electronic music except for down in the low end, um, so the low end down around the bass and that kind of thing, that's, that's, um, that's where we use them. Uh, you, you can use them up in the high end and stuff for little fluffy things and beeps and blips and that kind of stuff, um, but we're just going to focus on the sine wave being the bass side of things today. Now, before I pushed keys on my um, computer keyboard to generate these sounds, um, there's another way of doing this, and this is the way that we want to get into. Instead of having a human input, we want to we want to tell the um, tell Ableton to play these notes um, in a sequence and in a rhythmical pattern over and over and over and over. So we want it to repeat a sequence for us so we can actually get into the synthesizer and start manipulating the sound. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select an area on this timeline where I want um, these sounds to be produced. Now I'm going to pick 33, bar 33, so we're going to zoom in here. I'm going to pick 33 to 37. So that's four bars long. So see, I've clicked on the start of 33. I've dragged it one, two, three, four. So I've selected the area where I want the information to be, which is going to tell the synthesizer what to do. And I want to insert, oops, excuse me. I want to insert a MIDI clip. And it gives us this little colored square here. Now this little colored square is where we put the information um, 
on what we want the synthesizer to play. And we do that by giving the square a double click. And you see it's opened up this new view, um, this new screen for us down at the bottom. And this is called a piano roll. Um, it's quite standard uh, throughout most uh, synthesizers and um, it's uh, you can kind of see it's a it's a piano flipped vertically on its side so as we go up you see the notes here D D sharp E F F sharp G um, I'm not gonna get into music theory in this um, these tutorials it's not too uh, important that you have any musical training um, to do what I'm gonna show you here but um, you can see these are where the notes are and if we look across you see we've got a timeline similar to, similar to the timeline up the top here in the arrangement view so we've got one uh, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 2, 2.3, 2.2, etc. So this is bar 2, this is bar 3, this is bar 4, and these are the individual beats. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, etc, etc. So what we can do now is we can start putting in notes. We can double click anywhere on this grid and it's going to introduce, a, sorry, insert a little note for us. And we'll do that by, let's go, let's pick a G. So I'm going to double click. All right, now there's a note. Cool. So if I click up here on the timeline, uh, you see, oh, you can't really see it there. Let's see how we've got a new little note now in this uh, coloured square area. So just under the coloured square, we've got a new note. This this is basically a compact view of what's happening here. So if I click up here at the start of 33, the 33rd bar, and I push play, see, it's going to play that note for us. I've hit stop, I'm going to hit play again. Great, and you can see the, the, the cursor moving along down here and also moving along up here. So that's a good bit. We've only got one note at the start, so let's add in a few more notes. So I'm going to click on this note. Um, actually, no, I'm going to double click here on the uh, second beat of the first bar, on the third beat of the first bar, on the fourth beat of the first bar, and then the first beat of the second bar, and so on like this. And I'm going to keep clicking across. Now this is one way to do it, um, but there's another way if you want to copy a whole bunch of notes, and this is really handy if you want to duplicate something. I'm going to select all the notes like that. So I've just clicked and dragged, and it selected all the notes. I'm going to hold down the Option key, and I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag. Now notice it's made a copy of all these notes for us, so I can put these notes anywhere that I want. I'm going to drag them down over here at the start of the third bar, and so now we've got um, a G, and it's going to play on the beat, every single beat, for the next four bars. So now when I click up here and I click play, great, so this new set of instructions is telling the synthesizer that it wants to play um, a G on the first beat of every bar um, for four bars. Simple as that. Um, one thing I want to do here is I want this little blue area to loop. I want it to repeat itself over and over. I want this to keep going so we can get into the synthesizer and keep playing with things without having to push start and stop all the time. See if I click down here and push play, I'm going to push space bar which is the same as play. Now see when it gets to the end it's going to stop. It's going to keep going and there's nothing there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this thing, just zooming out, this thing over here. This is the loop or the punch in and punch out points or the loop points and this can be dragged anywhere across the timeline now see if I drag this here over here so we've got the start loop point at the start of where we want it to loop from the end loop point at the end of where we want it to loop from um, we can change the start and the finish points if we want but we don't want to because it's, it's, it's the perfect length and then up here we click this little loop button so you see this this thing in the middle here this is the this is the loop turns the looping on and off so now when that reaches the end it's going to repeat Cool. So now we've got this continuous sound going on. We've got continuous information being told to the synthesizer to play a specific frequency at a specific rhythm, which means we can now get in and we can start messing with the synthesizer and changing a few more things. Um, I'm still going to just focus on the oscillator for now so we can get an idea of what's happening. So let's just get this playing. I'm going to turn it down a bit. So that's the sine wave, and as I said, smooth edges means a smooth sound. Uh, it's a one one way of looking at it. The next wave shape that we're gonna that we've got in the synthesizer is this one here. Now this one is you can see it's quite sharp. It's got it goes up to a point and goes down. I wonder if I've got a picture of it here. Uh, I've got the wave shapes at the end. Yeah, have a look at this one here. 
So this one here, um, we're now looking at this one, which is called a sawtooth. Now a sawtooth, um, you can see, uh, if, if you can imagine the speaker, it's the speaker is in its sucked in position, it's pushing out, pushing out, pushing, pushing out at a steady rate, pushing out, pushing out, and then it hits the top and it sucks back in as quickly as it can. So it goes from the sucked in state to the pushed out state um, gradually and steadily, and then it sucks right back down and pushes in and out and out again. So again, this process is happening hundreds of times, sometimes thousands of times for us, um, and it's doing it over and over and over. Um, which will create a tone for us. And because it's got these two sharp edges here, this this point where it snaps back, it creates a much harsher sound. It's got these these uh, these these overtones and, and, and things that, that happen and they they kind of it makes a fuller sound, which is really handy because the type of synthesis that we're using here today is called subtractive synthesis. And su subtractive synthesis means that you create a sound. So with the oscillators, we're generating a tone with these wave shapes and these vibrations and oscillations. And then you subtract from them. You take away from them to shape a sound that you like. And a good way to think about this is a sculptor with a big, big block of stone. So he's got this big block of stone and then he's got all these little tools around here which he uses to chip away at the stone until he shapes the, um, the sculpture or shape the um, certain shape that he wants to create. Um, so this is that, that's the theory behind subtractive synthesis. There are different types of synthesis, but subtractive is definitely the most easy to learn, and um, it's the most commonly used one. I use it for the majority of the things I do. Um, so we've gone from this smooth saw, uh, sine wave to this kind of sharp um, saw wave. Now let's have a listen to how that works. So you can definitely hear the difference in the sound there. Here's the sign, and here's the saw. So instantly we've got much busier, harsher sound, which is good because we can start taking things away. Um, the next one on this list, and this is the only one that I'm going to cover, is the square wave. And if we go back to our pictures, you can see the square wave here. Um, you can imagine the speaker being at its pushed out position and then all of a sudden being in its sucked in position and then it's pushed out position and then it's sucked in position and it's doing this over and over so this one has really sharp edges sudden movements over and over repeating hundreds of times so it gives a much much harsher sound and this is this is a, a really fun one to play with um it, it, with subtractive synthesis because there's a lot to take away from and shape so let's just play that for you So that's our square wave. Those are our three wave types, and that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, there are other ones which usually come standard with synthesizers. Um, for instance, the triangle is another one which is usually included. It's just it basically it's like a sine wave. It's just got a little sharp edge at the top and the bottom. Um, and the other one uh, which we will get onto as well is white noise. Oh, do I have a picture of that? I should do. Uh, white noise. Do, do, do pictures I stole from the internet. This is what white noise looks like. White noise is random, chaotic, frequencies all over the place. Um, sounds like a TV out of tune. Um, I'll just play it to you quickly there. So that's white noise, but we're not going to focus on that for now. We're just going to focus on this, this one oscillator. Cool, so there's a number of things in this oscillator. We've only just worked with the wave shape for now. We've only only mucked with this drop-down menu here. Um, let's go back to a saw wave. Um, let me just uh, talk you through, through what these things do here. So we've got three knobs. We've got octave, semi, and detune. I'm just going to talk about the octave and the semi here. Now the octave um, is a knob which drastically changes the pitch of the sound, or it changes the... Um, it changes the frequency for us, um, and it changes it by an octave, um, or a, which is a, 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 a step of uh, certain frequencies. So let's say, for example, let's go back to an A, let's play an A. So I've opened up this clip, I'm going to select all these points, and we're going to bring them up. Let's play this A here. I'm just going to load in a, a little spectral thing so you can actually see what's happening here. So let's have a look. I'll make it a sign. Okay, so we've got the sine wave playing. It's playing at A. If we go and look in here, you see it's on A3, which is the universal standard A. 
And if we look at this graph here, this is graphing out for this is graphing out for us what frequencies are dominant. And we can see that by playing this A, I'm going to play a steady continuous A. So I'm going to take this first note and drag it all the way along and play this. So we've got this continuous wave. See how it peaks right here. And this point here, if we look down on the on the graph, down in this um, this area, if you look down here, if we drag our mouse over where this is, you can see it's about 440 hertz. So this A, we can tell, is being played at 440 hertz. And these little tones down here, these are all your, your, your kind of your overtones, and they go up an interesting series of harmonics. Um, if you're interested in physics and stuff, here, go and Google for overtones. There's some pretty interesting stuff going on here. But now we've got this uh, 440 hertz playing for us here. Now an octave is, 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 a, is an interesting um, step. If you play an octave below A, you get another A, uh, uh, sorry, another A, but it sounds lower, it sounds like one A below the A that you're playing. So it's the same note, it sounds like the same note, people, people won't argue that it's the same note. One's just higher and one's just lower. Um, and if you go above, an octave above, then you get another A above, which is one octave higher again, and you can keep going, and you can get about eight A's um, in the whole human frequency range, which are, <coughs> which are all the same note, they're just at different pitches. Now, the interesting thing about this is they all sound the same, and they sound perfect, it's a perfect interval, um, but a, 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 an octave is exactly the frequency times two or divided by two. So let's say we're playing the say at 440. Let's say we go an octave below it. So we're going down into the synthesizer. We're going to select this octave no knob and we're going to drag it down. So it says negative one. So now instead of um, us getting a 440 hertz A, it's going to play um, the A an octave below, which if we play it is 220 hertz. But it's the same note. If I play these two notes um, together, uh, Hang on, I'm just going to turn the octave back up to the original. So we're at 440 hertz. And I'm going to play another A down the bottom here. This is the 220 hertz A. So I'm telling the actual um, MIDI clip to play the A below, not the synthesizer. So we've got two A notes here. So we've got A up here and A down here. If we play these together. Oops. We've got an A and a G. <laughs> it's the same note, right? Here's the lower one. And here's the higher one. And together. Perfectly in harmony. It's a perfect sounding interval. But all, all that's happening is we're, sub we're dividing the frequency by um, two. So we're getting exactly half. If we go up an octave. So this is now on one. You can hear it's the same note again. But if we look at this frequency. It's 880, or roughly around 880 hertz. So each time we go up an octave, we in theory double the um, frequency. And I just think that's a little interesting thing to keep in mind. Seems the most beautiful, uh, harmonious note that humans can hear is a very simple mathematical function. So this, this, this is what we can do to change the octave. We can go right up. If we look here, we're up very, very, very high. So we're going up all the octaves now. Now the next one here, which says semi, this is a semitone. This is a um, this is this is going up a semitone, which is the smallest increment that you can have in the Western scale. Um, and a semitone um, is good for if you want to detune um, the synthesizer. So at the moment we're playing an A. If I bring semi up to one, so it says one semitone, it's going to play the note one semitone above A, which is A sharp. And if I just move this up and down. Let's open this up. So there's my A. I could drag this up, this A up to A sharp and play it like that, but instead um, we can control this with the semi if we want to. Um, yeah, getting strange sounds, uh, you can use this to do lots of fun stuff. To do melodically correct stuff though, you usually don't really muck with this. Um, Cool, so this is the oscillator. Um, the, the only other thing I'll show you on the oscillator at the moment is this um, thing here. This is simply the volume of the oscillator. So if I bring the volume down, very quiet. Bring it back up to zero. There we go. So that's, um, that's how the oscillator works. Now, that's 
all we've all we dealt with so far. Let's let's go back and let's put a saw wave, and let's go back and put some notes in. If I drag this back, so just like before, remember I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm going to copy these across by selecting them, holding down the option key, and dragging across. All good. We want a bass line, so I'm going to select all the notes and I'm going to drag them down to a lower note. And you can just push the arrow key down. So I'm going to push down, down, down. Still not quite a bass note. Let's keep going down, 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 down. That's kind of good. Let's drag these out a bit. The way I did that was um, holding down the command key. Um, if you click and drag, it'll snap everything to the grid for you. If you hold down the command or the Apple key, it'll let you do it um, as freely as you like. And if you've got all the notes selected, it'll do them all, all for you. If I just select one note and do it, it'll just drag one. Or if I select three and four and drag those, it'll just do those ones. Um, so what I'm going to do, that's all good, but this is very boring. So I'm going to start mucking with these notes a bit to give it a bit of rhythm. Um, so let's put two here. I'm going to drag them, make them a bit shorter. Let's make this one longer. Put one here, drag that one across here. So I'm just picking picking fun things at random here. Um, let's do four quick ones. I'm pushing uh, Apple D, which duplicates the note for me when I do that. Um, let's do another few of those. It will make a big, long sweep like that. Um, then we'll repeat the first set over here. Actually, we can just select those, go copy, or copy from the um, edit menu, and we'll delete these notes because we don't want them, and we'll paste these notes here. All right, it's pasted it for us over there, but we can just drag them across like this. So we've just copied that first bar into the third bar, and the fourth bar, let's go one, two, three, and we'll delete these, don't need these. So I'm just kind of going at random here, um, like that, and we'll do another, another three like that. So let's have a listen to see what that sounds like. See, I've just changed the rhythm. I've still kept the G consistent all the way through. That's not going to change, but um, we've changed the rhythm. some rhythm. Um, it's going a wee bit slow for my liking, as I said we're going to turn this into a little bit of an electro-y kind of tune, so we're going to raise the tempo of the tune up a bit. Um, I'm going to, this is the tempo area up here, um, it's in BPM, or beats per minute, which defines, this is kind of the notation used to define how fast the song goes. Um, we want this to be going a little bit faster, at the moment it's 120, so that's 120 beats per minute. Um, or if you want, I guess, two beats per second, because it's 120. Um, if it was 60, it would be playing 60 beats per minute, which would be one beat per second. Uh, we want this to go about 130 is a good speed. That's kind of cool. So this is the basis of our bass line. Um, it's still kind of boring. Um, so let's go into the synthesizer and let's see what we can mess with here. Um, so we've, we've, we've dealt with the oscillator, this is where the sound is being generated. Now we want to move on to the next tool. So this is the first tool that we actually use to take away from the sound to shape it into something new. Um, and we go, we click on this, this here. Now this is the filter. Um, now a filter is a... Um, uh, it's, 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 I guess it's what the name says. It takes all the frequencies that you've currently got and it cuts off certain frequencies depending on how you tell it to do so. Um, so a good way to look at it, um, I wonder if I have a picture, I should have a picture. Uh, we're not going to generate previews for us. I guess that's one. This is a better one. Um, so let's say here's our sound. So we've got our zero hertz here. Um, so this is this is where the bass notes are around here. This is where the the low end of things are. Um, and as we go up, we get up to about I guess fifteen thousand hertz, which is about the limit that the human ear can pick up when you're an adult. Um, and this is the volume up here. So I've got frequency along the bottom and we've got um, volume or amplitude or whatever you like up the top 
And we, what we do with a cutoff filter is we draw a line. So you see this line goes across and then it hits a point and then it slowly drops down. So what that means is all the frequencies inside this area here, they're getting played but all the frequencies outside of it over here, they're getting cut off, they're getting taken away, stopped dead in their tracks. And what this means is um, we can uh, we can do things like sweep this up and down and it creates a, a, a very signature kind of sound that you're probably quite familiar with. Um, what's the best way? I'm going to load up a Ableton effect, um, which is a filter, just, just because it's got a better visual representation of how the filter actually works for you. So if we look in this audio effects folder here, again under our live devices menu, um, you see we've got this thing called an auto filter. Now this is the effect that we want to load up. So I'm going to drop and I'm going to drag this down into the chain of, the, of things that I've currently got. So see we've got our synthesizer, then we've got this new auto filter, and we've got this thing called a spectrum, which is just this visual thing that we're looking at here so we can get a good idea of, of the actual waveform. So this is a cutoff filter. Again, here's this, this interesting curve thing which um, we were talking about before. Remember, across we've got frequency, and up and down we've got volume. Um, and then we've got this line that defines where things get cut off. So... So this is, this is our... Um, this is our... Uh, Rhythmic little clip. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag that over to the side and I'm going to create a new MIDI clip here. So remember we selected the area we want a MIDI clip in, we go insert MIDI clip and it's given us a new one and the reason I've done this is just so I can put in a big long note. So here's a big long note. It's up too high. Oh, we'll keep it there. But this is just so I can uh, show you how a filter works. So you see with the um, with the saw wave, if we look up on the spectrum, you see how we've got all these little excited overtones happening, whereas if it was a sine wave, we don't get as many. There's our square, and there's our saw. So we're just dealing with our, sorry, our square. So this is a saw, and if, as I move the cutoff point down on this cutoff filter, you see I can either click and drag it up and down here, or I can drag it up and down here. This box says um, um, uh, hertz or kilohertz, which is the frequency. So when the cutoff point is at 20,000, it's not. It's going to let through all the frequencies. But as I move this down, see it's cutting off all the frequencies that are above this point. If I bring it right down to the bottom, down to 26 hertz, it's hardly letting through anything. So you're probably familiar with the sound. So uh, you know, probably the most fun sound to actually um, mess with with a synthesizer, I reckon. Anyway, so that's the cutoff um, value of the filter. Um, the other important parameter of a filter is uh, the resonance, or in this case they've called it the Q. Now, so the, the, and, and what the resonance in the Q does is it gives a little bit of volume boost to wherever this cutoff point is. So our cutoff point is at 982 hertz. If we bring the Q up, notice how it gives that point at 982 hertz a bit of a boost. And if we bring it right up, it gives it a huge boost. What that does is it gives more volume to the cutoff point, which gives it more emphasis, so it brings out the point of cutoff. Um, it makes it much more clear and defined, which kind of excites the whole sound of the filter. So um, let's just listen to it with, with, with very little resonance. So that's with very little. But let's bring the resonance up. And do it now. Very cool. If we bring it up right up the top, you can hear it starts really ringing. And if we look up in the spectrum, you can actually see where the specific cutoff point is. basic parameters of a cutoff filter and of course this is a low pass cutoff filter which means it lets everything in the low end pass through or anything inside here. We've also got other kinds of cutoff filters and we can change the type of cutoff filters by using these four buttons here. This one is a high pass and it's just the same as a low pass except everything in the high end gets let through and everything in the low end gets cut off. So if we play this for you, let's 
bring the um, the brake cutoff point up. So now it's just letting everything in the high through. Low pass. High pass. The next one in the chain is this one, which is called a band pass. So it lets everything through that's inside this little band, and this band moves up and down. Everything on either side gets cut off. And then we've got this one which is called a notch, um, which isn't really used too much. Um, it's just for taking out a specific band or frequency. Get a nice kind of phase of effect, you can see it kind of ducking down there. So that's how a filter works. Um, I've loaded up a separate filter module just to show you how a filter works here, but this synthesizer has one built into it. So I'm going to click on this title bar of the filter and I'm going to delete it by hitting delete. So we don't have one anymore, so we've just got the full sound. But if we go over here and we look at this filter area here, this is where we can um, turn the filter on by clicking this fill one button. So now we've turned a filter on, on the actual synthesizer, and we can change the frequency and the resonance and the filter type here, just like we could on the original. The synthesizer lets us put the resonance up quite high. So you can definitely put the resonance up too high if you want. Um, it's also very bad for your ears if you put the resonance up very high and do a big sweep. You can hurt a lot of people if you do it on a big dance floor, so be careful. Um, and we've got our different types of filters here. We've got our low pass, um, we've got a 12 and a 24. 24 just means it's got a, a broader range and more emphasis. We've got a bound pass, we've got a notch pass and we've got our uh, high pass, and we won't get into the F passes for now. Um, so let's leave it on the low pass, let's bring the resonance down and let's move this around. Very cool. Um, so that's all fun. But let's say we want this, let's say we want this frequency to, uh, to, to move around. Um, you know, what, what can we do about that? Um, well, there's a few ways we can do this. The way I'm going to show you first um, is simply by hitting record and moving the frequency. I'm going to turn the spectrum off because we don't need it. So I'm going to drag this um, bass... Uh, delete this. So I'm going to bring back this bass line that we created. See how I'm moving the frequency up and down? You'll notice that there is a red line on the actual main timeline that moves um, it corresponds with this knob as I move it as I move it up it moves up as I move it down it moves down and vice versa if I click on the line and move it up and down you can see the knob moving up and down so these 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 can talk to each other so if I um, if I click a little bit back before the loop I hit record on the main timeline and I hit play what Ableton's going to do is it's going to remember all the knobs that I turn and it's going to it's going to remember how I turn them and then it's going to play them back the next time I play the song, which is really handy. So let's hit play, so it's counting. Oh, I have to turn my record off on the MIDI track. So let's hit record again. Play. See how it's recording up there on that line? As I move the knob around, it's drawing a curve for me. Cool. So I've done that, and uh, let's zoom in a little bit. So now we've got these curves, and if I just simply hit play again, push spacebar, see the knob's now moving on its own. It's remembered what I've done, and it's it's changing that for us. And that's very cool. Um, oops, that's that's a, it's a that's that's one way of very quickly automating um, a parameter to move uh, for you and do something interesting. Um, as well as hitting record, um, I'm just going to delete this, I'm going to select it all, I'm going to hold down command and push delete, which deletes the, the envelopes or the automation lines, it doesn't actually delete the clip for us. Um, another way we can do that is we can actually zoom in and we can actually just draw the, the line ourselves. So I'm just zooming in, so here's the, here's the cutoff point, we know this. Um, let's say this first note I want the cutoff point to be about here. And the second note, I'm going to click and drag across the second note. Now if I click and drag this automation line up or down, it's going to create points for us. So I'm going to drag it here. So see now, this first note is going to have the cutoff point here, and the second note is going to have this cutoff point here. And the third note, it's gone back to the original value. 
Cool. Let's say I want this big note to um, start here, but I want it to finish um, up higher. So what I can do is I can take this point and I can move it, and you see it'll draw a slope for us. And I can add in another point here if I want to change it all right. You know, you can add in as many points as you want. You just double click and it and it adds and subtracts points. So now this is going to sound. Cool, I want this note to be down a bit. Cool, and let's bring this one down, but let's make it go up and down like this. Bring it right down. And let's make these very low and slowly sneak in. And this one, let's add in, add in lots of points and bring it down and up and down and up, like this. I'm just double clicking and adding in points here for you. That's kind of cool. Let's change this note up a bit higher. Actually, no, let's not change that note. Let's take all these uh, automation things that I've just done. So I'm just going to click and drag this. So I selected two bars. I want to copy these across to the next lot of two bars. So what I'm going to do is I want to duplicate the automation. I don't want to duplicate the clip or the set of information. I want to duplicate just the automation. And the way, way I do that is if we look on um, across here in this little section over here of the track or the layer, what, what we were dealing with, you see this little plus symbol. This means that... Um, you want to take this automation that you've messed with and create an own, your own little separate subtrack of that automation. So if I click on that, see how now it's given us analog F1 freq. So the filter one of the frequency of filter one on the analog synthesizer follows this line here, and this is great now because now we can just select this part um, or this, this this section, and we can go edit, duplicate. So it's created a complete copy of the automation of the cutoff point, of the frequency, of the filter, of the analog for us, but it's left the clip as it is. So now we can play this. And if we want, we can go in and change a little bit here. You notice... Uh, See how I've got some automation going on here, but there's no actual notes, so we don't really need that. We can get rid of these and kind of, you just muck around with them and do whatever you want with them, get them sounding good. Um, because I've got lots of short notes, I'm going to remember Control um, Delete or Command Delete to get rid of the automation line. And let's just have a nice little sweep going on here. So this will go. Great, so now we've got starting to get something that resembles a bass line going on. It's got no notes in it though, so I'm going to double click on this clip and so we get this piano roll open here. And um, I'm going to, going to move some notes around. Now that, I guess this is where the musical theory knowledge comes in. Um, um, you can kind of hit and miss here. I'm just going to zip through and quickly change a few of these notes. Um, just so, I, just, just based on um, what I know sounds good. Um, for a start, I'm just going to select them all and bring them up an octave higher because I have a feeling it's going to sound better if it's an octave higher. So I've just pushed up 12 times here because there are 12 semitones in, in an octave. So I've gone I've gone from this G here, which is G0, up to this G here, which is G1, and I've done that by pushing the arrow keys. See, that sounds a bit high to me, but I reckon the G down at the bottom sounds a wee bit low. So one thing I could do is I can move these down to a new key, let's say an a, uh, D. Let's say an A. Or a G. Mm, the G kind of sounds okay down low. Um, what I might do is I might alternate between the two octaves and, and go up and down. So I might start this note on the high G. And I might put this note um, at a D. Now D is a perfect fifth in between the two Gs, so it's melodically correct. Bring this note up to the minor third. We've 
go back up to a G, a high G, um, we'll go to an F, uh, D, C, mm, put that on a B flat and an A, see if, how that sounds. Might put that on a, uh, a D. Put that back up to a G. Put that back up to a D. So I'm basically duplicating what I've done in the first bar. Yeah. And uh, put that on a D. And we'll put these up high. So let's have a listen to that. That's kind of cool. Um, I don't like this filter here because it's got a high, night, uh, high note. So let's, I've just brought this filter point up a little bit. And this bit sounds a little bit messy here. Um, you hear the kind of wah wah wah. It sounds a little bit off time. So let's. It sounds like it's. I don't know. It sounds like the the down part of the free, uh, the cutter filter going down doesn't sound in time. So what I might do is I might bring these back so they're hard against the beat. Let's see if that makes any difference. Click back here. Cool. So we've got this um this baseline kind of underway, and again, all we've used is uh, an oscillator with a filter. That's all we've used. But what a little problem that we've run into here is because we've used a saw wave on the baseline. It doesn't have much of a sub and much of a, a, a rumble down at the bottom um, and we want it to have a bit of chunk down at the bottom and the way you, you, you achieve that is by giving it a big sine wave base because remember the, the sine wave is a nice pure smooth shape um, speakers and headphones and whatnot can make that shape much more prominently and, 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 and powerfully than they can with a with a saw or a or a square wave um, because if you can imagine, you know, a speaker vibrating very slowly and powerfully, but having to jump from the pushed out position to the sucked back position as quickly as it can, it takes a lot of energy, and, and a lot of systems can't really do that. Um, but we can, if we use a sine wave, we can get a really round, nice tone down on the bass. So what, I, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I want to create an exact copy of this bass track that we've done. Um, and I'm going to do that by just clicking on the bass track, by clicking on the name of the bass track. And if we go up into the edit menu and we go duplicate, see how it's given us an exact copy of our bass line for us, right? So we now have two copies. If we play them together, it sounds a bit funny because we've got two things kind of competing against each other. What I want to do is I want to focus this one on the high part of the bass. So so I want this to focus on the the overtones of the square wave. I want the oh, sorry the saw wave. I want the saw sound to come from here, and I want this bass line to focus solely on a low sign that's playing alongside, but kind of underneath what's going on up here. Now the way I'm going to do this is first I'm going to let's I'm going to rename this to the sub bass because this is where the sub um, end of things is, um, and. Because we're going to be using a sine wave, we're not going to be needing to use the cutoff filter. So if I click on the, 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 the filter frequency of the synthesizer here, so I click on it, so see how it's, it's you know, the cutoff is still going to do all the same um, dancing around that we did in the original one. I don't want that, so I'm going to select it all, again, command or um, control, delete. So now I can bring the cutoff filter right down. So this one's, this one, I'm, I'm going to solo this track, which means I want this track just to play. You click on this little S over on the side, it'll just play the single track that you've got um, soloed. There's the high bass, actually let's rename this to high bass so we don't get confused. 
high bass. Oops, really got bass. And here's the sub bass if I solo this. So we've still got a saw wave on the sub bass. We don't want that. We want this to be a sine. So remember if we go over to the oscillator and we pick a sine from the wave shape. Now let's have a listen to see what it sounds like now. So you can hear that's got a lot more sub, a lot more grunt in the low end than this. Very cool. Now if we play them together. So you can hear now the overall sound has a lot more bass in it. Um, there's one more step that we need to take to correct the, um, a problem that we might run into here. And that's, even though this is a saw wave, it's still going to be generating some, um, some tones down deep um, in the area where we want just the sub bass to focus on. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to make sure that this channel is doing all of the sub work and this channel is doing all of the high work. Um, we don't want any kind of crossover in between these two. So we do that by um, using an equalizer. Now an equalizer, so if we look over here on the audio effects and we've got this thing here called an EQ8, which stands for an equalizer with eight poles. If we double click this, now we've got a new machine. And we, remember we're working on the high bass thing here. I'm just going to solo it so we can listen to it. We've got this little machine here, and this allows us to subtract frequencies away from the sound that the synthesizer is producing. It's kind of like a filter, but um, instead of you know making a cutoff point, we can draw curves and stuff like this. So if I play this, and I move this around, so it's kind of taking off frequencies at various points. Remember, it looks like a notch filter. Um, I can move this for one around, or what I can do is I can... Um, what I want to do is, I, about at this point here, 100, about at this 100 hertz, I want this number one to have a slope and I want it to cut off everything at the bottom. Um, so I do that by selecting number one and then we've got these six options down here which let us define the shape of um, what this certain pole, they call, them, they call them poles on this filter does. And I want it to be this one which is a high pass cut. So see how it's turned that into a slope for us. So now if I bring this up here, you can hear, hear the saw now has absolutely no bass in it whatsoever. If I bring it down, it's got a bit of bass. If I bring it up, that's good because we want the, the sub bass to focus on this area. So if we go into the sub bass and repeat the process, we add an EQ8, instead of... Um, cutting off the low end we want to cut off the high end so let's go up to the fourth pole and turn that into a low pass and we'll bring this down like that bring it down to about there so now if we um turn the solo off now this is just playing the sub and this is just playing the high and this is really powerful now this is this means it's got a lot of punch to it so we've got two synthesizers going to create one single bass line. We've layered them together and it's a very powerful way of um, achieving sounds that you want. And I mean, you can layer eight synthesizers together if you want um, to create a new sound. So this is uh, part one and we've just focused on the bass line. In the next um, part, I'm going to load up a sampler and we're gonna get some kicks and drums and hi-hats and stuff in there and get it starting to sound like a tune. Um, we'll also talk a bit more about synthesizers, specifically envelopes on synthesizers and um, more ways to really modulate and mess with the sound um, and start progressing through a tune. Great.